3D printers seem like they've gotten to the point where it's almost impossible to mess anything up. And yet, we all know there's always something that doesn't go just right. But, you know, a lot of the time, that's on us. We figure it out and we move on. But what if it's not us? What if it's the manufacturer that gets something wrong? Well, fortunately, there's plenty of ways we can upgrade, fix, and make our printers better. For instance, here's the Panda Touch by Big Tree Tech. Now, I've had my eye on this since it came out. And that's mainly because the control panel on my Bamboo Lab P1S, well, it kind of looks like an Amazon Fire TV remote. What do you think? I mean, it really breaks my heart. It really does. After all this time, though, I really have found that I don't use that control panel that much. I mean, the app looks good and it works great. So does the slicer. So why spend the money on an upgrade like this? Well, recently, the price on the Panda Touch dropped to only $59, and that's if you get it from Big Tree Tech. That's a great price for a super big touch control screen. And by the way, Amazon still has that for $69. Now, I want to give a big thanks to Big Tree Tech for sponsoring this video by sending out the Panda Touch for me to try out. And that being said, I'm going to give you my unvarnished opinion here, all the good and the bad. You are sure you want to do this? Of course I'm sure. And I did send some emails asking for answers and clarification on a few things, but we'll get to those a little bit later. Also, as a third-party product, you should know there's no guarantee Bamboo won't make changes in the future with their firmware that that could actually cause the Panda Touch to stop working properly, or at least until they get a new firmware out for the Panda. Along with that big screen, you also get the capability, if you need it, to control or just monitor up to 10 Bamboo Lab XP or A series printers. Something I really like is it doesn't take over the printer or even disable the original control screen, but the Panda Touch works alongside your printer, the app, and the slicer. Controlling up to 10 printers, that's going to be a stretch for most of us, but this could be a huge time savings for even a small print farm of just two or three printers. And since I have three completely different bamboo printers, I've got the P1S, the A1, and the A1 Mini, I'm using the Panda Touch to monitor them all from that same big touch screen. Opening up the box and digging everything out, putting it all together, that was actually really simple. The only big thing I ran into was really unexpected. A duck. Duck. Apparently it's a thing for Big Tree Tech to include a little rubber ducky and everything they send out. After getting everything put together, following the instructions, the next step was to connect the USB cable to an internal USB port on the P1S. And have to say, I was a little stumped when I read that. I really didn't recall an internal USB port, but there it is. So that crazy little hole on the right does have a purpose. If you want to attach the Panda to your printer, it does come with some tape on the bottom of the mount, but I already had some plans to use some modifications I found online, so I skipped that step. Well, pulling the front controller off the mount takes a little bit of effort since the magnets are really, really strong. Then on the back, you're, you're going to see three power options. There's an off, a battery, and a DC 5 volt. Off is, well, it's off, but as long as you keep it plugged in, it's also going to charge the internal battery. The battery setting puts the Panda on battery mode, and that battery is good for about 30 minutes off the dock. But when it's on the dock, it's powered by the USB and, again, also recharges the battery. Now, the DC 5 volt setting, that's for when you want to run the Panda straight from your USB power and not the battery. It'll turn the Panda off if you remove it from the dock, but it also charges the battery when you do have it connected. Now, if you turn off your printer when you're not using it, they 
recommend that you use this mode so the Panda will turn off and preserve battery life and those charging cycles. But if you leave the printer on, they do recommend you just leave it in the battery position. Now, I did see some comments and some online forums complaining about not being able to use USB cables for some reason, but in my emails with Big Tree Tech, they said it will work with a proper charging USB cable with 5 volt. Just need to flip that power setting over to DC 5 volt. And what that means is you could have it right next to your desktop computer. And my personal test on this, it confirmed it works just fine. I tried different cables and different power adapters and had no problems. I even connected it to my computer's USB port it worked great. Now once you get it all connected and turned on, all that you have left to do is add your printers. Now you can add a printer manually, putting everything in that you need, but the easiest way is just let it scan your Wi-Fi network for bamboo printers, so you have to make sure they're on. And it was really kind of shocking how quick and easy that worked. You just need to enter the access code from your printer, which fortunately they give you directions and instructions on finding those on your printer. Using the Panda Touch to control my three bamboo printers, it's a snap. The first icon on the left is the home screen and this shows the print job of the currently selected printer if you have one going. And that home screen also has some really cool icons on the right to get right to some important functions. There's a dedicated light switch that toggles the internal light of the selected printer on and off and then there's shortcuts for the network and nozzle and bed temps. Now I do wish the home screen had a way to select your printers without having to go to the network icon, which is at the bottom, then you have to click on your printer, then go back to the home screen, but hey, maybe there's a suggestion for big tree tech. Maybe a future update, please? Now those shortcuts on the right that I mentioned on the home screen, they actually open up the second icon on the left that kind of looks like a settings icon. And there you're going to see two tabs across the top, and the first tab has controls for all your fans, the bed, extruder movement, uh, even changing the print speed. The second tab's for all things filament related, including changing the filament preset, type, and color. I did verify that changing these settings in Bamboo Slicer, the app, almost immediately changes it on the Panda Touch and vice versa. If you change it on the Panda, it changes in your Slicer and app. And that's super nice. I did notice though that any personal filament presets I made in Bamboo Studio, they just show blank on the Panda, which is okay, I guess, as long as you know that and you don't change them in the Panda to something else. Getting files onto the Panda Touch kind of reminds me a little bit of using one of my old bed slingers. You slice your file, export it to a USB, walk over to the printer, plug it in, pull up the file, print, Easy peasy. Not so peasy since I could just print wirelessly straight from Bamboo Studio or Orca Slice or the app. Also, don't think you're going to be exporting G-code. Nope, that's so 2022. Wait, what? Nowadays we all do 3MF files. I mean, I wish we did, it'd be nice, but anyway. One of the biggest uses of the Panda Touch is for a small print form. And if you have two to 10 of those exact same 3D printers, there are some amazing features available to you. They also have a neat feature to create groups of printers and that allows for hitting print on the main printer and all of them print the same file at the same time. Well, since I have three different models of printers, I did contact Big Tree Tech and asked them if that would work with my printers. Well, the tech replied he didn't know, and after waiting for a response, I decided to move on to my own testing. Big, big warning here. This didn't go so great, so I don't recommend that you try it. Unfortunately, I wasn't filming when I did this, and I'm not going to try it again, so you'll have to take my word for it. What I did was I created a print group with all three of my printers, P1S, A1, A1 Mini. I sliced a file for the P1S, and I told it to print to all three. Let's go watch this train wreck. And just to be clear, yes, I was standing right beside the A1 and the A1 Mini, and they immediately started making grinding noises, trying to level, so I just cut the power quickly. Well, I did let the P1S sit for a while, but it actually never even started, even though it was the leader, the main one. And needless to say, I'm not really willing to do any further testing along this line, so Let's just assume you have to have the exact same model of printer in your print group. Oh, clap, 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 clap. All in all, I'm actually pretty impressed with the Panda Touch. Yeah, there's some problems, but 
There always is. Nothing's perfect, right? If you have more to add to the conversation, please drop it in the comments. And thanks for joining me in the lab as we upgrade and learn, create, and amaze.